Hi there, Aaron here, your friendly neighborhood meteorologist, and I'm back to answer your questions about the weather. So I'm sure you've seen on the news lately uh, that there are some pretty good sized tornadoes that are moving through parts of the United States. And so what I thought I'd talk about this week is a scale that we use to rank tornadoes called the Enhanced Fujita Scale. So let's talk a little bit about what that scale is, how it got started, and what each of the categories in that scale mean. It actually started in 1971 when a Japanese American meteorologist with the name Fujita came up with a scale that ranks tornadoes based on the type of damage that they cause. We called that scale the F scale. In 2007, the F scale was replaced with a more fine tuned version of the scale called the Enhanced Fujita scale or the EF scale, which is what we use today. In either case, both scales had six categories in it that ranked from zero to five. Each one of those categories contains a range of wind speeds. And so we use that scale to figure out the approximate wind speed of a tornado by surveying the damage that that tornado causes. The lowest of the categories in the Enhanced Fujita scale is EF0. Winds in a tornado that fall within this category range between 65 and 85 miles an hour. And this type of tornado causes only very minor damage. So we're talking about maybe some shingles being blown off a house, maybe some broken limbs here or there. But by far, this is the weakest of all the tornadoes. But they make up the largest percentage of tornadoes that occur every year, about 53%. Next up is EF1. And tornadoes in this category have wind speeds that range between 86 and 110 miles per hour. And these tornadoes usually cause very moderate damage. So we could have some very damaged roofs, we could have some broken glass, uh, we could have some trees that are knocked down, very small trees that are knocked down, things like that. And these tornadoes are the second most common type of tornado that occur at a frequency rate of about 31%. The third category is EF2. And tornadoes in this category have winds that range between 111 and 135 miles per hour. So now we're talking about strong tornadoes. These are the ones that can do things like shift homes off their foundation, uh, they can lift cars up off the ground, they can destroy mobile homes if they're in their path. Um, and these tornadoes are a lot more rare than EF1 or EF0s. EF2s only happen about 10% of the time. The fourth category is EF3, and tornadoes in this category have winds that range between 136 and 165 miles per hour, and these can cause severe damage. So um, large structures like shopping malls, uh, two-story buildings, things like that, the ones that are reinforced can see some damage from these tornadoes. Uh, this tornado can throw vehicles instead of just lift them up off the ground like an EF2. Um, it can also debark trees, things like that. It can take the bark right off trees. So these are the big tornadoes now that we're talking about. But these are also a lot more rare than even EF2s. These only happen about 3% of the time. So the next to last category on the Enhanced Fujita scale is EF4. And so now we're talking about the tornadoes that you see on in movies and stuff like that. And tornadoes in the EF4 category have winds between 166 and 200 miles per hour. And these can cause extreme damage. So uh, very large buildings are um, severely damaged, homes are destroyed, uh, things are large objects like vehicles can be thrown, missiles are generated. And by missiles what I mean is uh, things like a 2x4 can be thrown through a car or um, a, a tree can be thrown through a building, something like that. But it's, it's starting to pick things up and throw them directly at things. The last category on the Enhanced Fujita scale is called EF5. And these tornadoes are actually referred to as the finger of God because they happen so rarely and they cause catastrophic damage. So with tornadoes in the EF5 category, they have to have winds greater than 200 miles per hour. And like I said, they cause catastrophic damage. So the damage they cause can be um, large buildings are, are destroyed, steel reinforced buildings have significant damage to them, uh, tall buildings collapse, large vehicles can be thrown a, a mile or more. So these are the massive tornadoes um, and, and they basically wipe a place off a map. And they happen very rarely, 
um, only less than 0.1%, less than 0.1% of the time do EF5s occur. So exactly how is the enhanced Fujita scale used to rank tornadoes? Well, like I said, we rank the tornadoes based on the type of damage that they cause. So we can't rank a tornado until we survey the damage after it's over with. So the way we determine where a tornado falls on the scale is the National Weather Service will send out damage assessment teams after a tornado has moved through. And it has to be a pretty good sized tornado for a team to go. Teams don't usually go out for the little tornadoes like an EF0, EF1, EF2 they start to pay attention to. So anything larger, EF2 or larger, they'll usually send a team out for that. But basically what the team does is they go out to the location where the tornado happened and they look for the type of damage that happened. So did uh, cars get lifted off the ground? Were cars thrown? Uh, were large trees knocked down and uprooted? Um, were houses damaged? They take all of those observations, they go back to their office, and they review all the information that they have, and they come up with a report on that tornado. And so then they'll turn around and issue that report. They'll have things like how long the tornado was on the ground, how wide the path was, how long the path was, um, did the tornado ever uh, touch down multiple times, things like that. And then that in that report, they'll issue the EF rating. So if you want to learn more about the enhanced Fujita scale, I'll put some links down in the description. And that'll do it for this edition of Weather 101. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you have a weather-related question, just drop them in the comment section down below, and I'll try to answer them on another edition of Weather 101. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Weather101Net. So until next time, see ya!